Okay guys, I want to do a quick addendum to that previous video I did where we were testing the subwoofer on different stands with or without my homemade stand with the squash balls. And yes, I can chew gum and do YouTube at the same time. Anyway, back to the point. I started thinking about the small improvement we saw on the y-axis when the test tone was playing uh, in terms of improvement on the actual sub and on the floor and because the actual vibration without any treatment was small just getting it to zero almost on the y-axis made me think something was going on that was working well but why weren't we getting it on the other axes and instead of editing out the previous video and giving you know my revised thoughts I decided to do an addendum to kind of show you this is what being audiophile and testing things is all about. Sometimes you'll do stuff and it'll make small improvements, but you can always think of things that can go the next step that can improve things. Or you may make a mistake and you shouldn't write it off. You should think about it and maybe try different things. So what I did was I took out the stand from the below the subwoofer and let me show you how the balls were arranged. Okay, so they were arranged in this pattern and I realized that from the X axis left to right and the Y axis, it's different. So you have three, two, three. On the Y axis, you have two, one, two, one, two on the um, X axis. Now, I'm also probably short given the weight of this subwoofer on the number of balls I'm using, so I've got some more in order. I'm going to use them. But what I'm going to do when I get those in is test a more, and then imagine a third one here, test a more uniform pattern such that the benefit that we got from the y-axis will probably translate over to the x-axis as well. Maybe the extra balls will improve the y-axis performance too. So again, subscribe, stay tuned, get notifications, and as soon as I get that and do a video, I'll put it out and we'll see how it goes.